Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Confidential here on another episode of There Will Be Trivia and the Total Recall 2 tournament here on There Will Be Movies. Uh, this one's going to be interesting because uh, <laughs> as soon as I set up the chat for this, Dan was like, well, I'm going to lose. And Ryan's like, anything can happen. So I don't know if he was just being a gentleman or if he genuinely believes that. So uh, before we start this match, go ahead and comment below your predictions. Uh, I predict Dan's going to, you know really surprise himself because you know i don't know if he's playing a game here or if, if his confidence is just low because just how things have been going lately because i know he's he's been real busy real sleepy but i'll let the man speak for himself right now let's see what he has to say yeah you know i mean i never do i, I never do that well in, in trivia matches these days i i always i'm competitive but i always lose you know i i when you watch movies for 40 years, you just can't retain the information like some of these younger guys. They've been watching movies for five years or four years or three years or whatever. I've been watching movies for 40 years. I watch close to 350 movies a year. I'm watching five, six, seven, ten movies a week, writing reviews. Plus, I got a full-time job, and I'm exhausted all the time. So I usually can't retain the information in these kinds of matches i like playing just for the fun of it and, and just try to keep my mind active when it comes to this sort of thing and you know I, i've watched ryan play in multiple different places and the guy's a beast and um i'm surprised he doesn't have his manager with him tonight <laughs> uh, yeah um Look, I said in the chat that anything can happen because I really do believe that. I'm no, I'm past the point to where I'm going to go up against somebody who puts out maybe a low-scoring match and I think I'm going to win, and then they pull it right, and then they pull a rabbit out of hat. I think that any t anything can happen, and I'm not taking Dan lightly here. I've seen some of the matches he's played. I've listened to some of his reviews. This guy actually, he knows movies. He's watched movies, so if there's any detail in there he might find, and... Even though I have a manager, it doesn't mean I always need to have one with me. I can come in alone or, you know, sometimes I feel like I need an assist. I, if I need someone to really get me in my, out of my head, then yeah, I'll bring someone in. But, you know, like before Dan said, this is just for fun to just go in here, see what I remember, what I've attained. All right. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, definitely uh, some different perspectives from these players and, uh, my most recent uh, experience with uh, Ryan was two years ago when I did my tryouts, and he killed it. So I know he has potential to do really good, but we'll see how Dan does because I have always have faith in Dan, and that's why I always bring him around. So round one, this or that. All right, I'm going to read the question, and I'm going to give you two options, and you're simply going to pick this or that for one point. First question, who directed A Wrinkle in Time? Was it Ava DuVernay? Or Regina King. Whenever I write questions, I always try and think ahead of time what it is, just so I can test myself. I honestly don't know if I would have gotten this on my own. So I don't think I'm too smart, the fact that I've written this. Five, four, three, two, one. Ryan. Um, I'm spelling, I don't know, but I went with Ava DuVernay. And Dan. Ava DuVernay. Well, one way or the other, we're going to have a tie. And in this case, it is going to be a 1-1 tie, because that is correct. Uh, your second question. Which Stanley Donan movie was released first? Singing in the Rain or Funny Face? Not only is this one release date question, it's two release date question. But it's a 50-50 shot. Five, four, three, two. Better percentage than uh, Dan's uh, computer, not dying. One. <laughs> Let's go to Dan. I put Singing in the Rain. And Ryan? Yeah, I also wrote Singing in the Rain as well. For a second, I thought you were asking a question. I was like, why is your hand up? <laughs> oh. <laughs> as long as I see what your hand's doing, it doesn't have to be up in the air. We're, we're all right over yeah. here. I'm not, and I'm pretty good with my eyes. I can see what you're doing. Question number three. Which child is deaf in a quiet place? The son or the daughter? Dan's like, man, maybe I am good at this. Over okay, here. what? 
I'll tell you, I got something to say after this, after we give the answers. Oh, I wonder you, if... you didn't say, what, did, were we right or wrong? Yeah, you guys are right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was making the joke about your hand being up. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, the dog. And Dan. Heard him say, yeah, there it is. Yeah, the daughter. Her name is Millicent Simmons. I'll tell you what, she is fantastic in the sequel if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, we've all seen it. Okay. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. As someone who's like, we need to get this over with so my computer doesn't die. Oh, if you're trying to do tangents. Question number four. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino plays Mr. Blue in Reservoir Dogs. True or false? As I was reading that question, you guys were like, where's the question at? <laughs> True or false? <laughs> Five. That's what I love this format. I can just throw anything out there. Three, two, one. Dan. I don't think he's Mr. Blue. I think someone else. I don't think there is a Mr. Blue. And Ryan. Yeah, I think I'm positive he's not Mr. Blue, so it's false. He is Mr. Brown, which sounds like Mr. Shit. Yeah. So, I thought so. I was thinking, I said, I know that movie enough to know he's not Mr. Blue. <laughs> Mr. Blue is uh, one of the old men. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but it was the old guy. One of the old guys. Question number five. Which Tim Burton film wasn't composed by Danny Elfman. Ed Wood or Mars Attacks? See, they're not all easy. Just gotta gotta ease you guys into it. Build your confidences up a little bit. You know, give you you know really you know use the benefit of that fifty fifty. Yeah, there you go. Erase it. No, nah, don't get cocky. Five. Well, I'm not acting like it's the hardest thing in the world, but I love it. You know, every match, it doesn't fail. Where everyone's like, holy shit, this is it. It, 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 it. We warm up to it. Five, four, three, two, one. Ryan, what do you got? I literally could have gone with either answer, so I decided to go with Ed Wood. It's literally called this or that for a reason. And Dan. And I went with Mars Attacks. Uh-oh. We're going to have our first lead. And Ryan Attacks. Uh, it is Ed, Ed Wood. I could have swore he directed it. He did the score for Ed Wood. Nope, that's why I that's thought it was... That's the tricky part. Yeah, that's the tricky exactly. part. They collaborated so many times. Uh-huh. I could have sworn it, though. Shout, shout, shout out uh, Malcolm with uh, top 12 uh, Danny Elfman scores. Maybe if you would have watched that episode, you would have seen. He's freaking killing me this weekend, Henry. <laughs> Danny Elfman's killing me this weekend. I know. I saw I saw in classics last night. That was hilarious. Uh, your final question in round one, gentlemen. Which MCU supporting actor appears in When a Stranger Calls? Frank Grillo or Clark Gregg? Yeah, let's let's talk let's talk about Danny Elfman some more, just so we can get in Dan's head. He has the same name as you, Daniel. I know. How did I not? <laughs> when I was watching that cl when I was watching that classic, you're like, oh, I'm so pissed. I knew it, though. I knew it. I knew it, and I. Um, you're I like used all three repeats. You should have five, four, and if you're in there, it'll be trivia. You could just use the time extension. Two, and one. Ryan, you're not gonna get an extra point if you get it right, but do you get the perfect round? What's your choice? I doubt it. I say Clark Gregg. And Dan? Yeah, I say Clark Gregg as well. You don't need to doubt it because you're correct, Clark Gregg. When I when I saw that, I was like, "Really?" Fun fact: Tessa Thompson's also in it, so I, I actually had two uh, MCU supporting actors that I could have chosen in that question. Yeah. But I went with Clark Gregg just because it makes it easier to go Frank Grillo because it was actually Frank Grillo seems like he would be in that type of movie, so I thought that was pretty what good. What was Frank Grillo's that. first movie ever? Uh, we'll find out right after this. All right, round two. It is called Locked In. If you've ever done testing in the trivia sphere, you know how we do this. I'm going to read off a multiple-choice question, and if you are cocky and you want to answer it off the bat, you can lock in. But if you need a multiple-choice, it will be available for you for one point. So, first question. Who directed 2018's Christopher Robin? Multiple-choice. 
All right. Dan's going to stick with multiple choice. Yeah, I have to go with that too. All right, both of you multiple choice for one point. Is it A, Robert Zemeckis, B, Paul King, C, Mark Forster, or D, John Favreau? I can't wait. I'm, I, I say this all the time. I can't wait for someone to uh, tip their hat when they hear the answer and go, ah, and forgetting it's a whiteboard round, so their opponent now knows <laughs> that, uh, oh, yeah, it was that one. Five, four, three, two, one. Dan, for one point. You know, for a second I thought it was B, but then I said, oh, I think this is one of those movies that you wouldn't expect him to direct, and that's why I'm going to go with C, Mark Forster. And Ryan, what do you pick? Well, I actually went with B. One of you is correct, and one of you tied it up. Dan Skip yeah, Allen, six, po- six to it. six. I knew All it. Right. When, I was, when I was writing that, I was like, Holy cow, Paul King's a great choice for this. Robert Zemeckis and John Favreau, that's that's that. But it was between Forrester and King on this one. I knew it. Question number two. What is the name of the computer chip implanted inside Gray in Upgrade? Oh, man. I'm going to have to go multiple choice. God. I love Upgrade. I'm going to lock in. Oh, Ryan, Ryan's going to lock in. So, Ryan, keep him up. And, Dan, your multiple choice. Is it A, Fisk? C stem, C stick, or D Aaron. Could you repeat those for me, please? Absolutely. Is it A Fisk, B stem, C stick, or D Aaron? <sighs> All right, five, four, three, two. One. Ryan, for two points. I believe it is STEM. And Dan? I put A, Fisk. Two-point lead for Ryan. He gets it correct. Yeah. It is, in fact, STEM. He went out on, a, he went out on a limb and uh, went, went locked in, and it paid off. I had a Question. feeling I thought it was. I just, for some reason, it seemed too obvious. Yeah. Trust me, those multiple choice were, weren't the greatest <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> Question number three. Who stars as Anthony in Wes Anderson's directorial debut, Bottle Rocket? I'm going to lock it in. All right. I'm going multiple, actually. Okay. Just got to let Dan actually write it in before I read off your options. My you, mm, mine. <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> we won't even go there. All right, Dan, keep them up. Ryan, your options are A, Jason Schwartzman, B, Owen Wilson, C, Luke Wilson, or D, Bill Murray. Five, four, three, two, and one. Luckily for Dan, two of those options had a U in it. Dan, what is your answer for two points? Yeah, I, I, I was like, oh, I put Luke Wilson. And Ryan, what did you put? I also wrote Luke Wilson. And that is correct. <laughs> Almost gave it away, boy. I, I mean, you, you 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 kind of helped, you narrowed it down a little bit for him, but you also did dig into the lead, so it was two. Now it's only one, nine to eight. Yeah, uh, you're I'm so sorry about that, Henry. I almost completely screwed that up. All yeah, four of those that, that, have been a Wes Anderson film, so it really was a process of elimination. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I was like, eh. It's interesting. Bottle Rock and most underrated. Fun fact: my favorites of his movies. Question number four. What actor made their directorial debut for A Bronx Tale? Locked in. Young man, you cannot lock in before you finish writing after we just established that last round, how you took forever. (laughs) And then no talking once you lock in, Dan. Five. I'm going to lock in, too. Uh Oh, we got to double. 
Risk it for the biscuit. We got both keys are in the lock. Dan for two points. Robert De Niro. And Ryan for two points. No, I, damn it. I think I confused it with another actor who did a director of debut. I wrote Mario Van Peebles. It is, in fact, Robert De Niro for a lead change. Ten to nine. Going into your fifth question in round two. What won Best Picture for films released in 1950? Multiple. Multiple choice. All right, for one point. Is it A, All About Eve, B, An American in Paris, C, On the Waterfront, or D, Marty? The first thing you got to think of is, did, in fact, all of those win Best Picture? Which one was released in what year? And which one am I going to make my guess for? Because obviously I don't know it. Five. Very good multiple choice, I might add. Four. Thank you. Three. It helped that they were all released in three, two, one. Uh, Ryan, for one point. I went with B. Uh, I believe that's an American in Paris. And Dan? I went with All About Eve. Both of those Best Picture winners, both of those separated by one year, one of them released in 1950, and one of you has a two-point lead. It was all about Eve. Damn. Oh. Damn. And your final question in round two, with Dan currently up 11-9. to nine. The Commitments is about a band being formed by people from what European country? Locked in. Wow. When I wrote this, I was like, I don't think either of you ever know this, but I don't care. I want to write this. Interesting. Great movie. Underrated can't, movie. Can't give any clues because it wouldn't be fair, but I want to say something later. Yeah, I'm going to check down a multiple again. All right, Dan, keep them up. Ryan, your multiple choice options are A, France, B, Italy, C, Sweden, or D, Ireland. Dan, if you see the 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 police, are you in a Warner Brother? Five, four, three, two, and one. Dan, for two points. Ireland. And Ryan, for one point. I went with D. Both of you are correct, but Dan gets two points and Ryan only gets one which extends Dan's lead to three points going into round three 13 to 10 and round three is the IMDB round revised so gentlemen you're going to get a one point a two point and a three point and I'll explain them all I did it all behind the scenes if you've watched matches up to this point you are already familiar so Dan you were in the lead would you like to choose between the good batch or the bad batch I'm a good guy at heart. I guess I'll go with the good batch. All right. Ryan, down three with only a maximum of six points in this round. Got some questions to answer. Okay. For, for one point, your year is 2010. Your genres, biopic, drama, and sports. And your synopsis. Based on the true story of a boxer trying to step out of the shadow of his crack-addicted brother and make a final run at the belt. Uh, why could I pick this one? Because you're a good guy. The fighter. For one point. Man, why couldn't I pick? You know, he's from Mickey Ward's from Lowell, Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. Well, maybe if we uh, do a Dan Skip Allen interview, we'll talk more about it later. But for now, we'll go into Ryan Payne's two-pointer. Ryan, your year is 1997. This will tie it up, by the way. Your genres, drama, mystery, and thriller. Would you like to hear the top build or the director? Let's go with top build. All right, once again, 
1997, drama, mystery, thriller, and the top build, Michael Douglas. Is that the game? That is correct for a tie game. A tie game, in fact. So you're going to kick it over to Dan, who's going to get his one point. And if he hits this, he will force you to hit your three. And if not, Dan's questions are going to get harder, and we'll see if he will break the tie. Dan, from the good batch. Your year is 2015, and it's sci-fi. Your plot synopsis. A young programmer is selected to participate in a groundbreaking experiment in synthetic intelligence by evaluating the human qualities of a highly advanced humanoid AI. You repeat that? Absolutely. Your year, based on U.S. releases, is 2015. Your genre is sci-fi. And your synopsis, a young programmer selected to participate in a groundbreaking experiment in synthetic intelligence by evaluating the human qualities of a highly advanced humanoid AI. Five, four, three... Hot. Looking for X Machina. X Machina. <sighs> All right. So they're going to get harder. And to break the tie, Dan, we're sticking with you. Your year is 2017, and your genres are comedy, drama. Would you like to hear the top build or the director? Would you say comedy, drama? Correct. 2017 comedy yes. drama. Um, I'll go with top build. All right, once again, 2017 comedy drama. For the lead, the top build is Sirsha Ronan. Ladybird. You're forcing your opponent to hit his three. That is correct, Lady Bird. Oh, my God. All right, we're in a scenario where there is going to be no tug of war. Ryan, you have to hit your three to stay alive. And then you'll force it over to Dan where he will have to hit his three. Okay. All right, Ryan. Your year is 1967, and your genre is crime. And your three keywords are racism, cops, and murder investigation. Okay. 97. One Just a reminder, Ryan has to hit this to force Dan. Can you repeat that? Absolutely. 1967, crime, racism, cops, and murder investigation. If Ryan hits this, he'll force Dan to hit his three-pointer. If not, Dan will be moving on to round two, potentially in five. Okay. Um, four. The only one that's shouting out to me is in the heat of the night. And it shouted for a reason, because you are going to be shouting, Dan, hit your three-pointer. Ryan Payne, you have taken the lead, and at this point, you have done all you can do. So now it is in Dan's hands. Dan. Yeah. I knew every you, one of Ryan's, too. I mean, oh, yeah, you didn't know your one point. I was going to say you knew every one of yours, but no. Dan, if you hit this, you move on to round two. If not, Ryan moves on to round two. Yeah, I had multiple choice. Sorry, I'm talking. But... Yeah, you're right. I trust me. I, I'm there all the time. You you want you want to argue with yourself? All right, Dan. Your year is 2008. Your genres: drama, 
sport. And your plot keywords. Ram, stripper, and old age. The wrestler. Woo! Moving on to round two. Yeah. Dan Skip Allen. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. All right, well, I didn't mean to get so crazy. <laughs> we'll t- we'll talk to you real quick, Dan, before you for your computer shits out on you. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know for a fact, so I don't know if this is gonna come off as you know rude, but is when was the last time you've won? How does it feel to win? How does it feel to win against Ryan? Going in, you didn't have the most confidence. Um, I I've won uh, this year in classic. Uh, I almost won twice in classic. I screwed up on the last question. And uh, I mean, I'm glad to, to beat somebody of his caliber. I, I really have the utmost respect for uh, Ryan as a competitor. And that's why I said in the chat, I, I'm going to lose because I just expected him to win because he's such a competitor. And, uh, um, and uh, I'm, okay, just, go ahead. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Uh, I mean, you obviously, when I said the answer, I was cheering already. So obviously, you know how happy I was. Yeah, that's that's what I like to hear. I like because uh, as someone who is on in the midst of a comeback slash redemption tour slash uncancellation and having people starting to you know interact with him more, seeing people get happy when they win and actually take these things seriously, make it makes me feel real good because I'm actually really trying to do something good here, have some fun and have do something serious. Maybe not the that the biggest stake. Not over here doing characters and promos and doing this for belts. Even though Ryan has two on his wall over there, you know I'm not over here stealing his belts. But I I, I do like to take this seriously because you know I'm you know as as one of the people who created you know one of the first leagues. It's it's nice to be back in a semi serious scenario. So uh, Ryan, this is probably I think this is actually your first time really doing something with me because I know I don't remember how the timeline because I knew you were in the tryouts and I don't remember how far we got into it. So even if it's not the exact first, it's definitely one of the first. What were your thoughts on the format um, and the, just the general concept of what we did today? I really actually appreciate the format. I always like getting myself involved in new type of new different ways to play trivia. Honestly, I, I look, I love the old way of formatting. It's fantastic. But when something new is added, it really helps to stimulate, help me get moving in my creative process. And I told you, Dan, anything can happen. I mean, I'm not sure how this was going to turn out. And that second round really proved it. I mean, looking back, I mean, obviously looking back now with the Oscar question and then with Bronx Tale, if I had been more assured, like going to multiple choice for Bronx Tale, even though you still would have been in the lead, it would not have been that wide of a gap. I mean, hell, you probably still would have come to winning. But like I said, I'm not trying to go over this. This was just for fun, and you still came out in the end of it. And, I, and hey, you proved 100%. Just because you're going up against a good player doesn't mean the game's decided, and you showed it right there. I mean, I know for me, I still got a long way to go. But I believe, Henry, Henry this is like one of the first times. Yeah, because after that tryout, it was just yeah. kind of like – I won't say dead water, but it was kind of like just a, it was a blackout all of a sudden, yeah. like no reception, nothing hearing back. For two years, it, it was rough. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad. So like you said, this is technically just for fun, but the fact that both of you took it so seriously to have um, Dan have that genuine reaction and have you kind of beat yourself up for it, you know, for something that, you know, is, you know, fun. That may, that means a lot to me because it's, that's one of those just, you know, you're not, you're not just kissing my ass or just saying what I want to hear. You, it just instinctively coming from your guys' true emotions. And that means a lot to me. So in fact, if you guys made it to this far in the video, that means you probably liked it. So you might as well just drop a like. And if somehow you're not subscribed to the channel, you might as well subscribe. You know, we're, we're over here. I'm um, doing some numbers. Well, fake numbers, but Hey, I'll take them. Cause you know, and, and you know, these numbers got me in a position to be monetized. So all your interactions means a lot to me. So, uh, Henry Confidential, I really appreciate uh, Ryan Payne uh, coming out here and uh, showing showing off until, unfortunately, he didn't, you know, you know, do do just quite as much as he would want. And congratulations to Dan. I will be hitting you up when it's time for round two. And I am Henry Confidential. I appreciate you all for making this far in the video. Be ready for the next one. We're out. <laughs>